I love it. Okay, so hello, Rachel. We are just pressing record for the second time because we had a little bit of a bandwidth issue. Um, and we had just jokingly said it's not April Fool's because it's 1st of April. Maybe it is. Um, anyway, we've kind of been talking the last couple of days and you kindly said that, you know, you'd love to do a session and you were happy for it to be recorded for the wider MBIT community as a, just an example of coaching. So I don't know much about what's going on other than the little bits we exchanged yesterday. So how about telling me what it is, what's going on for you, what you want to explore or look into today in relation to this session? Okay. So uh, the reason I, was, uh, I, I got in touch with you is because uh, I know that I have, I know that I have a <laughs> lot of content to give. Uh, and I know that I can, uh, very head based. I also know that I can deliver the content and I have a lot of stuff to be able to share with others. Yep. And all that's fantastic. And all that is fantastic. And all that is great. But there's a lot coming. <laughs> yeah, I, I could have, you know, um, but the content, you know, cause, cause of Google and, that the at the tips of our fingers we have so much so much available to us yeah um, but it's bringing that the, the knowledge that I've been trained uh, to people now that's uh, you know uh, a technical I can I, I know how to do that technically but to go from thinking about it and being yes 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 and doing a few videos and then not doing it because I'm actually finding that I'm doing the housework instead. And that's never going to end. There's always going to be asked to be done. And I know that I'm doing, um, what's the word? I'm doing procrastination really well. I am. I'm screwed it so well. And you remember that but video I, that we showed that, you, you know, that stop it video. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking about that. And I actually keep saying that to myself. Stop it, Rachel. Stop it. <laughs> uh, but there's a there's a step, there's a step that I'm missing. I, I I feel that it's the step that I'm missing is is I don't know what that step is. It is taking the knowledge that I have, giving it out there, putting it out there, and being a hundred percent believing in myself, knowing that what I'm delivering is of, of, of value and it's going to um, reach people that need to be reached. I, I work with children and young children and that, you know, now is such a, such a prevalent time to support parents to be able to support their children. And I'm not just talking school age, I'm talking, you know, from zero onwards. Yeah. And not just for now, but for the rest of their lives. Yes, now is important. Um, for the rest of their lives and so what, what does it mean that it's not becoming aligned what is stopping me that's my question I don't, I've been asking myself what is stopping you why do you want to clean the house all the bloody time and not sit down in front of your computer and, and give this do this stuff okay so that I'm gonna, makes sense. yeah it does absolutely make sense and I think you've given me the answer of what do you want in terms of I'm hearing the passion and the desire to get all this beautiful skill set out to parents and to kids. I totally get that. And I get that you have asked yourself the question, what stops you? So I want you just for a moment to get out of your own head in terms of asking yourself the question and just be the client. Okay. As if you didn't know what the process was. Okay. And then me okay. saying, so what is it that really stops you? that is more than this story that is well-worn and you've told yourself a hundred times, what is it that really stops you? The first thing that came up when you said that was the belief in myself. That was the something inside of me that said the belief in myself. Okay. The belief that, I, that I, can, I can do it and not to feel not worthy of it. Like, I just, I guess I keep feeling... Oh, but there's plenty of people out there who can do this, Rachel. There's probably millions of people who help the children and help parents. So what? So what? What is it? So what? What have you got to offer that somebody else doesn't? Oh, where did that come from? Holy shit! <laughs> you know, that's what I battle with inside. 
<laughs> and you know again Rachel I don't know you well like long term is this something that is a pattern that you've run many times in different areas it sure is a pattern okay yeah all righty so strange question what stops you breaking that pattern That pattern is really comfortable, Suzanne. Yeah. I know that pattern. I know that pattern. Yeah, I know that pattern. And that pattern is comfortable, but now it's becoming frustrating. Okay. And is that a new feeling of being frustrated by the pattern? Is this the first time you've been frustrated by it? Yes, because actually I've never really, uh, I know, I, I, I guess I knew I was doing it, but something took over and it just on autopilot yeah, and yeah. just got on with it. But now, you know, there's image for me. This is, this is, um, this is also not just, uh, for other people. This is for me too. Um, uh, and, and, and as much, you know, I, it's like, if I could help the world, that'd be fantastic. But I also need, it also starts at home for me. Um, and I've quit my job and you know, do this, uh, and I really feel that um, I am stopping me. I'm stopping me, and I don't know why I'm doing that. Okay, beautiful. Alrighty, I think I get the feel of what's going on. Um, okay. It feels pretty uncomfortable to me. I think it would be great to get rid of that feeling. <laughs> yes, it's very uncomfortable. And you know, I have to do to the girls. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want whatever I'm saying or doing to come to them because that's what I'm trying to teach parents not to do. And if I'm doing it myself, hello, hypocrite. Well, and human being. So, let you know, we're not in the uh, business of beating people up here. <laughs> um, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now... Sorry. Uh, Rachel, just kind of bringing into the model, I know from some of the conversations we have had that you've got a Christian faith. Mm -hmm. Is that something yes. important to consider within this or is this unrelated to that? Uh, I feel like it's unrelated. I feel like it's unrelated. My faith has done a bit of a swerve lately. Uh, but since the training with you, uh, it came back again for me. Okay. I was okay. raised Catholic. I was raised Catholic. I was raised in the Catholic school. It was mass every every Friday. My dad was Catholic. Not a practicing one. He would say, "Rachel, it's about the church on the Sunday or the Friday. It's about being a good person and kind to others all seven days of the year, all three hundred and sixty-five days a year." So whereas we had a, 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 a um, religious I guess um, foundation. It was more spiritual with my dad saying, you know, you 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 can burn your knees for a couple hours, but it's it's more important how you how you treat others and yourself all the time. Okay, so again, I lost some of that. I think I got the gist. Um, it was just breaking up in terms of bandwidth again a little bit. So we'll see where it goes. And if it naturally comes in, we might just invite it at that point. And if not, then we'll leave it out with a straight MBITS, you know, three brain kind of model. So are you happy to cool. have a bit of an explore? Yes, of course. All fabulous. All righty. Well, you know where we start. We always start with a beautiful, coherent, balanced breathing. So get your posture kind of in that beautiful place where your lungs can expand down and easily. And remember, we're going for calm alertness. So it's not relaxation. We're looking for calm alert, that beautiful place where we can connect with our brains easily. And even as I'm talking, just become aware of your breath. Maybe invite that breath to come in easily, safely. Settling in, first of all, to your heart level. But knowing that that's gonna spread around your whole body as your whole body responds to coming back into beautiful balance, 
and start to bring your breath into that even rhythm. Just be aware where you're breathing into your body. See if you can get that breath even deeper down right into the bottom of your lungs. So pretty much there's no movement at all here. Everything as if you're blowing a balloon up in your tummy. I know it's not physically possible, but as if you could with every breath in, just expanding your tummy and then letting your tummy relax again. That's it, that's lovely. You got a few distractions there too. Just asking for a zoopa doofa. <laughs> So again, drop in deep into deep belly breathing, even, natural, flowing. And just take in a beautiful feeling at heart level, whatever you want to pick, whether it's gratitude, gratitude for this space to reconnect as a family or gratitude for all those skills and knowledge abilities that you do have actually maybe a little bit of self-appreciation might be a while since you've done that mm. feel good mm. yes it does beautiful so staying in that beautiful awareness of your inner kind of body your inner brains and just taking all of your attention around that heart space. What is it that is truly important to you about this desire to take your knowledge out into the world? What's coming up for me is spreading the love. That's what the first thing that came up. Beautiful. Was just spread. I, I almost saw a ripple-like effect, like a tide almost going out and rippling that love. And I've always felt that, actually. You haven't always felt that or you have always felt no, that? I have. I felt, I've always felt that I have this... I have, I wanted to have this ripple of love. Beautiful. So what's different now? I don't, I don't know. Okay, feel into it. Don't try and answer it with your head. Feel into it with your heart level. That heart that was just feeling a little bit frustrated. What is your heart feeling at the moment? If you were to name the emotions that it's feeling, what are those feelings? It's a little bit anxious. Mm -hmm. uh, a bit fluttery, if that make, and so I guess I turned that into anxious because the fluttery feeling, I don't know if that is anxious or the fluttery feeling. My heart, Uh, what's coming up is uh, calm and then it said to me <laughs> or I felt that's right Rachel be calm be calm beautiful beautiful and as you just listen to your heart say to you that's right Rachel be calm just allow that calm to become embodied just imagine it kind of rippling right around your heart and chest area, settling any anxiousness. Mm. 
Oh, I just felt this enormous. Um, oh, my shoulders just went down a bit. Like, oh. I think just... we need to be neighbors. Sorry, I lost that again. You think we need to be neighbors? I still didn't catch it. To be. It's okay. It was just a, it was fine. Just, okay. Yeah. So allowing that beautiful calm to ripple around your heart and even wider, settling down that old anxious fluttery feeling. So underneath that superficial fluttering that was happening, what is it that your heart truly wants? Deeper than maybe what you've been aware of before. Uh, feeling of contentment, contentment, contentment. Feel of uh, success. Yeah, and I don't, and I it doesn't feel like a monetary success. I, that's not what I'm. That's not what I'm feeling. I'm feeling just success for me. Beautiful. And we can explore that a little bit more as we go round. Um, your heart knows what that means, and that's all that matters really at this point. Who are the other people who are connected with? You know, let's look down four, six months down the line and you have started to really put this into place. You've got over whatever this, you know, lack of movement is and you're rocking it out around the world to all these parents and children. Who else is going to be impacted by this? Who are the people who, you know, you'd want to consider with that change? Well, that would have to be my husband and my two girls. Yep. Yep. And what about any sense of who it is that you're reaching out to and connecting with? Who are you taking this whole kind of knowledge base, skill base out to? Parents all over the world with young children. Yep. And, and school age children. But more so, I feel that the impact at the moment, the impact of the impact is for, for me, for parents with young children to be able to have them raise love. Beautiful. Beautiful. Anything else the heart, the heart wants to say before we just go and listen into some of your other brains? And we can come back and ask it more later, but anything else it absolutely wants to know is on the table and has been heard. Also, the thought that came up was just believe in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and where did that come up from? <laughs> I don't think it was from my, my heart. <laughs> no, I don't think it was either. <laughs> so let's drop down into the gut then. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it wants to be heard. Yeah, and that's okay. That's great, right? Because it wants to take action. Maybe it means it's ready to take action. But before we kind of let it jump in, let's just explore some of the specifics. Yeah. What does the gut need that at the moment is not being given, that it hasn't got? A voice. A voice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Which, which is odd for me because I really thought that I... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, could you repeat the question, please? <laughs> I asked, what did your gut need? Something that at the moment it hadn't either been given or that it hadn't got. And you came up with a voice, which is beautiful. 
I wonder whose voice is not being heard. And the word and the word courage has been has been coming up for me, but that's yeah. been coming up for me since training. Okay. Okay, so let's just stick with the voice at the moment. Whose voice at the moment is not being heard? Who is the you that hasn't got a voice? My gut. And any particular aspect of your gut? Because we, we have multiple identities, don't we? We have, you know, we're a mum, we're a wife, we're a friend, we're a coach, we're a... Which is the voice that at the moment has been in some way contained and not been allowed to be heard? I just feel, I keep coming up with the word me, just me. Me, 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 me. <laughs> <It's> about me. <laughs> because I feel, I feel though as though the mum voice that's just on autopilot. Yep. And you have only fairly recently given up your job to be a coach. Is there any significance of that here? Has, have you got a coaching voice yet? Have you got a identity as no, a coach? No. no. I'm, okay. I, that's what I'm working on. Yeah, that's what I am currently working on. And I don't seem to be able to find the voice as a coach. It feels discombobulated. Okay. Okay. A bit of a cheeky question. Okay. If you were to know exactly where that voice was, where would it be? Can it be two places? Possibly. It can be wherever you're holding it. Well, it's on my heart and my gut. Okay. So let's stick with the gut place at the moment. Where it is in the gut, what does that voice want to say? What does that voice need to be heard? Few things came up, but I was just like, uh, I don't know. so just feel into it, and from that place where you put your hand on your tummy, inviting, giving permission now for that voice to be heard, to come out of you, if you like. What does that voice want to say? I'm here. Beautiful. You might like to say hello to him, her, it. I see you. I hear you. It's making me feel a bit emotional, actually. Yeah. I'm not surprised. And now that it knows that it's been heard, 
Is there anything specific that it would like to say to you? Be gentle. Oh, beautiful, which fits beautifully with this rippling of love and spreading love. So it's a gentle voice, which maybe is why it's not been heard. Because with so much else going on, there's probably a lot of kind of noise in your system. It just keeps saying, I'm here, I'm here, and be gentle. Beautiful. Beautiful. Anything else that voice needs? Time. Okay, tell me more about time. Uh, I could tell you more about time, but I think I've gone back up to here. Yeah. I was just thinking, yeah. Yeah. Uh, giving it time, giving it time. But it was a very soft voice down there. Yeah. Soft and gentle voice, eh? So we will absolutely come to your head in a moment, but I'm really keen to let this soft, gentle voice actually have a voice. And letting it know that it, yeah, that it can voice what it needs and who it is. What are some of the characteristics of that voice that are important about you as a coach? Who is that you as a coach? I had this picture of a bull in the field and I, oh my God, oh. I've had this, just had this picture of a bull in a field and I feel perhaps as though I am almost like a bull in a china shop going, you know, keep going, keep going. And I, this is what's, it's, 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 it's coming. It's a bit of a strange feeling that I'm at the moment. Okay. Almost like I wanted to be sick just now. Okay. Well, just be alert to that, that it might, I mean, that's not beyond the realms of possibility. And it is just information, okay? It's just information. Yeah. Yeah. So this bull in the field, bull in a field, bull in a china shop, two very different things. Yes. So your bull yes. in the field... What's your bull in the field doing? When you saw the picture, what was your bull in the field doing? Just wandering around. So, you know, like bulls do, it wasn't chasing, it wasn't running, it wasn't struggling, it wasn't, it was just being. It was just being, meandering might be a good word was just meandering on the field and then all of and after that it was bull in the china shop but i think that's from my mom and dad that's <laughs> just a bit like that now as a child <laughs> okay um so, uh, the the picture that came up with the bull in the china shop that brought you out of your gut right so is that where's the bull in the china shop is that in your gut or is that in your head that's in my head. Yeah, okay, I got that. So the who you are, the being, and remembering that your gut initially said, it's just me, I'm j it's just me, is this beautiful bull meandering in a field? Have I likened myself to a bull? I'm not sure because your gut will often speak metaphorically. Oh, really? Yeah, so what is a bull to you metaphorically? Is it, I don't want to put words into your system, but 
when you look at that bull meandering in the field, what are some of the characteristics of it? At first, when I saw it, I had the word wandering around lost. It was lost in the field. Okay. And why a bull? I know why a bull. Is a bull head strong? Can be. Maybe I, the picture of a bull in a field, I, I want to say that for me, I got so much that I want to just target and do, but I'm in this huge field that doesn't have, doesn't seem to have any kind of direction. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. So thanking your gut for that beautiful image because it gives us so much more information than words would. Just going into that gut level again one last time. Is there anything that the gut needs in relation to safety, security, knowing that we're going to be exploring you, you know, coming out into the world global provision of education? Anything your gut needs in relation to safety or security around that or boundaries? No, but what I saw in front of the bull was now like a path. It went from a field to having this path in front of the bull, like a bitumen, I guess you call it in this country, like a tarmac, I would say. But yep. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, path. And up ahead, I can see there's a tree in the middle and I can see this the path. It goes two ways. Oh, wow. Tell me what's happening. Talk about these two paths. I don't know, but the bull's coming closer to the path, the two paths. Okay. Yeah. We'll just let the bull know he's completely safe to explore. That he can walk on that path. In fact, he might find that that path has been put there specifically for him. Interesting, I'm using a him. I don't know why. Is your bull a he or a she? It's a bull, I guess. Which kind of implies he. Mm -hmm. No, I just let him know that he's safe and he's okay. Beautiful. So just let him carry on meandering down that path. There's no hurry. There's no force. And he knows there's these two paths ahead, either side of a tree. Mm. He doesn't have to decide right now which one to go down. We don't even know what those two paths are. No. Making me wonder, let's go up to head a minute. Okay. Oh, head always wants to speak. I know. And it's been very patient waiting for us. Mm. It has. <laughs> and it will have just heard all that beautiful information from both heart in terms of the ripples of love that your heart wants to pass around the world and you know this success for you is not necessarily money although we'll obviously have a money component and this bull now beautifully meandering down a tarmac path in a field what does your head know about all of this that there is uh, there, uh, there is a process. There is a, I had a word and then it, it went away really quickly. Um, 
group. Okay, well, let's stick with process for a minute because probably if it's important, that word will come back to you as you carry on. And what do you know about there the is process? A journey. A journey. That's what it says. Sorry, there is a journey. Okay, and what does it know about the journey? That it's a good one. Nice. Does it know it, what? Sorry. No, go go ahead. Oh, it's okay. I, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Does it have any idea what this journey is, where it's to, or what the destination is? Just keep saying yes, 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 yes. <laughs> ready to go, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> nice what words other than yes are important on this journey for you patience mm. <laughs> that i'm almost there that i need patience Yeah, that's all I got. That's what it's did. It's nothing. For once and for once it's actually not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone completely blank. It's uh well, apart from those two things, it's gone a bit blank. Okay, awesome. So this bull coming up to a tree with two paths and being on a journey and needing patience, what meaning even now is your head beginning to create out of all of that? that I'm on this headstrong path and I'm wanting to take, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to take a direction. The bull almost is in once, it was, it was moving, but then it was in a, it feels like, oh no, it's not, that's not right. Uh, that the bull is obviously me, that's what my head is saying, that's you and you need to take a pathway, but be patient and my head's like, take the right one. Well. Does that mean the right one, correct one, or the right one as opposed to the left one? No, that means the correct one, not as not opposed to the left one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and that, yeah, I'm on this pathway and I've, I, 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 I'm strong uh, with all the, like I've got all the content on my back and I'm really strong with that. Uh, but I can clearly still see these two pathways. And what does your head know about those pathways? So if one is the right one and one is not the right one, what, how will you know the right one? When you get close enough, how will you know which the right one is? <laughs> it just says, because I will guide you. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, just because we're embit coaches i want you to drop down into heart okay okay because we know that we like the heart to lead not the head right yes yes what does the head feel about the fact that the that, sorry what does the heart feel that the head has just said it's going to guide it no <laughs> yeah i kind of <laughs> guess that might be the case <laughs> Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah, what's the heart got to say about who should be guiding and, and how you will know which path is the right path? I will just know, but that's my head again. That's my head speaking. I'm saying to my, it keeps going, you'll just know, you'll just know, but that's a head, isn't it? I'm well, 
it depends because we can have intuition from any of the brains so you feel into where is that coming from that says i will just know where does that message start in you yeah it was my head okay so thank you head and, and absolutely assure the head that it will be part of all the decision making and we want to make sure that the head also leaves room for the heart in particular to be part of that decision making so let's go both ways is the heart happy that the head is involved yes and is the head happy that the heart's involved not quite so sure okay so let's go up to head what is the objection at head level with allowing the heart to be involved in knowing which the right path is uneasy uh it just kept, it told it was saying uneasy um uneasy and what's it uneasy about? What is the story that is behind uneasy? What are the words that are underneath uneasy? Letting the heart rule. Why? So it's uneasy with letting the heart rule? Mm. Okay. What would it need to know about the heart to let the heart have a role? Not that the heart takes over completely. This isn't about blocking the head out, but just what would the head need to know to even let the heart have a role in this? Confidence. In the heart. And what would that be? What would that be like? What would it hear, see, feel, sense? How would it know it had confidence in the heart? I don't know. Okay. The word compassion came up, but I'm not sure if that's because I, I yeah, the word compassion came up, but I, I don't, it didn't, that didn't feel right. Okay. Okay. So let's trust that. So let's yeah. drop into the heart for a minute. And the heart has just heard that the head feels a bit uneasy about including it. How does the heart respond to that? How does it feel? just said why yeah why 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 and it feel i uh, keep having this thought i'm gonna go to the heart but i keep having this thought as you you're wanting this ripple of love so why aren't you coming from a space of here first it feels like it's in a bit of turmoil okay and you know interesting that your hands are kind of indicating there's maybe two conflicting issues in this turmoil any idea what those two conflicting issues are no okay let's jump back up to head again for a minute now the heart is quite clear that it wants to ripple love around the world particularly yes. to parents and to children that was pretty clear what does the head think about that as a plan? Awesome. It likes that plan. It does like that plan. Fantastic. And does the head know what these two areas of turmoil are? Is, is that, this is a big stab in the dark, right? But is the two things in the heart in any way linked to the two paths? Huh. Uh, 
I reckon you might be correct. Okay. So, and did that bring up any insight into what those two things are or the two options are or the two ways of the journey are? The two things that I came up with was one path is the failure and one path is success. Oh, nice. So, um, you know, it could just be my map of the world, but I'm kind of guessing what the right path there is. <laughs> Is it the left or is it the right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Interesting. Mm, very much so. Yeah. So we're back to your body will just know which is the right path. And the right path for you is success. And success at the heart level came up very early on that was not about money. So what does success look like, feel like? sound like I've done a bit of work on this myself but before and uh, success for me is being able to provide a comfortable um, surroundings and lifestyle for my children and my yeah. husband um, but it also means that success for me means that I feel aligned and congruent all the time, most of the time. Sure. No, you know? Yeah, we're uh, human, right? Yeah, we are human, exactly. Um, success for me means that, uh, that I will change lives mm. for the better. Um, and yes, I, I get that, you know, I obviously need to be, I need to make money as well. But for me, success is people to know who I am and think, you know what, I'm really glad I connected with her because I learned a lot. Nice. Stupid question then. So we got a nice, beautiful picture of what success looks like. I can feel that. It feels lovely. Why is failure an option? Why is there even a path for failure? What does it give you? It doesn't give me anything, but I, I think that I have been so hard on myself most of my life that uh, that path of failure is a path that I've, uh, my hands. Do you see what I'm doing with my hands? I noticed. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> oh, that was obviously a little bit of a topic that I did not want to discuss. Uh, and what you, okay. what you won't be as aware of, and I'm just going to point out for the master coach people watching this, is which hand was squishing which hand? And your left hand was forcibly enclosing and possibly even hurting the right hand. Okay. Yeah. So I think that that path of failure has been a path that has been pretty worn and I'm scared of going down that again. Okay. And actually, when I think about that path of failure, it, it wasn't, it's not actually failure at all. It's not failure at all. But I don't understand why I put such a, because it's not, I haven't really failed at anything. I mean, human, so, you know, there's things I haven't been able to do. To do. Oh my God. <laughs> The, the thought that just happened was that I have never felt good. I've not good enough. Like everything I've always seen other people have the success that I perhaps have wanted and not been able to get there. So then felt like a failure. Holy okay. shit. Then. Holy shit. Interesting language. Just I don't <laughs> want to say anything. Was I supposed to know? <laughs> well, no, not at all. Right. I'm just, I'm really curious because of my conversation right at the beginning about, is there a spiritual part to this? And I'm going to ask the question again. Is there a spiritual component to this? Holy shit. 
And if there is, where is that in relation to you right now? Is it inside of you or outside of you? Is it beside you, above you, behind you, in front of you? It's inside me. Inside you, beautifully. And with all the wisdom and all the eternal power and knowledge that that holy part has, what would he, she, or it say to you about you not being good enough? That I am. I am. It just kept saying I am. When, you, when I answered that question, I am. Beautiful. But I, don't, I don't understand why I keep going down this, why I keep doing this. I'm, it's, it's been a pattern. I'm realizing now this is, uh, this is this pattern. And you kind of verbalized it by saying you have been hard on yourself. So it's a pattern that you're creating in yourself to yourself. Why do I do that? Well, there may, you know, who knows, there may have been all sorts of reasons why when you created that pattern much younger than you are now, that there would have been benefit to it for where you were then. Right? Of course. I of always course. believe that. Always believe yeah. that. So I guess the only question now really is, is it okay? Is it time to upgrade that pattern? And you're ready to no longer be hard on yourself, no longer to be even using the word failure or thinking failure, because as you rightly said, you haven't failed at anything. No, I haven't. In fact, it's probably been the opposite. So what would be a better name for that other path? You've got success on one road. What's the other road? And you can be really creative with this, right? You. I have a picture in my head. I don't want to share it with you because it's got to be yours. You had a bull in a field on a tarmac path coming towards a tree. When it met the tree, the path went two ways. Where does it go beyond the tree? Where do those two paths go beyond the tree? Do they go beyond the tree? Does one stop? Walk yourself round that bull. Walk yourself round the other side of the tree, still in the field. What happens on the other side of the barrier, the obstacle? Nothing. They're the same. They're the same. There's still two of them. There's the same pathway. One has flowers. This one has flowers. Can't quite see where it leads to. And then this one doesn't seem to have any flowers on it. So if they're now the same in mm -hmm. some respects, even though one's got flowers and one hasn't, and before one was success and one is failure, what are they now called? If they're the same. <laughs> path number one and path number two. <laughs> uh... And if you look at path number this one, one, this one here seems to be going uphill a bit. This is one here seems to be a hill. Is which yes. one's going uphill? The one with or without flowers? The one without the flowers is going uphill. The one with the flowers goes for a very long, as far as I can see, it goes for eight, it goes for ages. And it looks like there's water at the end of the pathway. And this one looks like it's going uphill. Okay. 
So they're not quite the same. No, and you, you, you asked me the question, what would they be called now? <laughs> it just comes up with my life. It just does. It just because I, I keep feeling I know which one I'm going to take. It's okay. Just this whole. And, and which, really, which sorry, one are you? Which one are you going to take? I don't know. I don't know. I like flowers. I like flowers and I like water. So I might take the one on the right hand side. Okay. And when you think about taking the one on the right hand side, how does that feel inside? Because you said you'd know. I did. You're right. Does it feel right? Feels happy and a bit jolly. And is that where you want to be? Or are you still trying to be hard on yourself and go uphill? <laughs> <laughs> mm. or do I want to take the easy route uh, oh, that's, no. a choice. Yeah. that's a choice yeah. too yes it is a choice I it has the bull hasn't gone very far on the path We've no because you haven't path. decided which road to take yet no so she's at the flower or she the flowers he's at the flowers Oh, so that's interesting. That is really interesting. She's become a she. Yeah, she's become a she. I just said that. I didn't. Um, so have a look. Step outside of yourself and have a look. Is this bull no longer a bull? What has she become? She was a headstrong bull. What is she now? <laughs> It's a, it looks like a horse because <laughs> it's got the reins and it's looking, it keeps going like that. It keeps looking behind, checking. Beautiful. But the bull had a bit of, when I said a bull at first, it had a bit of a, um, the word is not negative. It had a bit of an uncomfortable feeling when I said that. And right. then when I told you, when I, when I, down the horse it was uncomfortable okay okay so you know there may be we've we know already and we're not going to go right into childhood stuff but we know that there was possibly a um a, a reason for you being hard on yourself that you were headstrong that you were a bit like a bull in a china shop to get things done that you had to be strong and powerful and all of those things now, some of those characteristics actually will be really useful to take with you. So it might well be worth that bull and the horse having a conversation with each other and the bull teaching the horse how to do the good bits so that you don't let go of the strengths that are useful. Should I do that now? Yeah. Okay. My bull and my horse are going to have a little chat. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, the bull just gave like this backpack thing to the horse. The horse Beautiful. put it on and thanked the bull. And they both turned around and walked to the fork, to the, to the, to the, this bit here, where it's both in the fork bit, the V part, the, 
They both walked there, and it seems as though the bull vanished, and the horse is there. Beautiful. But it doesn't look like a horse anymore. <laughs> What's it become now? Me. Beautiful. Beautiful. You with all of that backpack of knowledge and skills. I've got a backpack. The backpack has flowers on it. Imagine that. And everything that you might need in terms of strength and force when you need it. Mm -hmm. and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things you said was just being you, and this is you, right? This yeah. is you with all the benefits that have come from all the different versions of you in the past. But there was that you as a coach that didn't have a voice. Yeah. Is this that you? I, I have one. You have one. Mm. And now that that coach, that? now that that coach you is equipped, what does she want to say? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that like what? I'm sorry. Excuse my French. What the fuck is the problem? Well, there isn't a problem at all. At all. Okay. So let's oh. check and let's check in with heart, right? Yes, let's, yes. Has anything changed at heart level about what this you as this beautifully fully equipped skilled coach with a passion for children and parents wants to do? Speak. Beautiful. And if you go up to head does the head of this beautifully equipped, skilled coach know what she wants to say and how to package that in a way that can be delivered out through whatever offerings you design? Yes, it does. Yes, I do. Beautiful. And dropping down to you at your core, your gut, deep, deep inside of yourself, this beautiful you as the coach that now has a voice, that knows what it wants to do, that knows how to do it. Is it ready to take the first step on that path with the flowers leading out into the future that will lead to that beautiful water down the line? Is she ready to take the first step? Yes, and you know the song that was coming on? The ants, what's that song? The ants go marching on. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> that was what it was saying. <laughs> oh, and it seems to me as though it's got a bit of a sense of humor too. Nice, sense of humor is good, especially when you're dealing with kids and parents. <laughs> so let's go back up to your beautiful it, head. Yes. Just for a moment, up, up to your head again. What is that first baby step? Confidence. They keep telling me to do it. Just do it. That's what it said to me last time. Just yeah. So now and we want a bit. We want. We want your head to be a bit more specific right yes, so what yes, yes. specifically is the first step what is it that you know head level that is the first thing that needs to be done to make this a reality well two things but the first thing is 
to do my all my market research to see if I, the, the webinar that I want to put out there for the parents and the children, uh, if there is interest. And my first step is to do my market research. Brilliant. Okay. And you know how to do that? Yes, I do. Awesome. And having done the market research to know whether or not it already exists, which is pretty unlikely because there's not going to be many people with your unique fingerprint on this whole field, right? Yeah. You then know how to establish whether or not there's an interest for it. Yes, I do. Awesome. And give me the third step then, because I do like threes. So you've done your market research, you've established that there's an interest. What is the first thing that you will do to make this a reality? Uh, record my webinar, because I've already written, already written this course. Beautiful. Okay. So let's just go back to heart level again. What is the beautiful resource or value that is going to be absolutely perfect for you doing the, the market research, assessing the interest and recording the webinar? What's the resource or value that would help you do that? What's coming up is my self belief, and then uh, self belief. Do it. Uh, okay. And if you were to take in self belief at heart level at this point, in terms of what does it feel like? Give me some of the specifics about what that feels like at heart level. What shape is it? What color is it? How big is it? It's a massive, great, big, shiny red heart. Fiery That's red amazing. heart, massive. So a massive fiery red heart. Yeah, that's almost pulsating. Pulsating. Beautiful. So I want you just to feel into that for a moment and just start to play with it in terms of if you turn the temperature up slightly or down slightly to get it to be in the position that's just right for you. The degree of the red and whatever kind of combination of reds are in that fiery red heart. Just play with it so that it's just the right level. The pulsating. Just notice if there's any sound with that, if there's any smell with that. Get that pulsating at just the right level. So that pretty much your heart is pulsating itself to get on and do this. Beautiful. Now taking that pulsating red fiery mass up into the head level and lighting up all of those creative centers of your brain ready to do the market research, ready to write the webinar. Well, it was like fireworks in my head. <laughs> in a good way, I hope. <laughs> oh, yeah. Beautiful. And then coming back down to heart level and just checking in that this is true to who you are, right? This self-belief, this is absolutely true to who you are. And that holy voice that said to you, you are, you are. Check in that that is in line. That everything that you are setting in place before we close that loop is true to you and true to your beliefs true to what you want to do moving forward beautiful mm. and dropping that red fiery pulsating mass down into your gut 
that whole sense of self-belief. Filling any space where self-belief needed to be filled. What's happening? Oh, when we said drop down and I dropped it down, this, this, it was a, a strange, but not bad, uh, strange feeling in the top of my tummy. Like it actually did drop down. Nice. Mm. Good, because that's where self-belief belongs. So let it fill the whole of your tummy, your abdomen, right down into your pelvis, that absolute hot, fiery, pulsating self-belief. That even if one tiny little spark went out, there's so many other fireworks that would light up again and fill the hole again for you. And with that self-belief, it will change your behaviors. It will change your actions. It will change what you do and everything will be driven from a self-belief, deep held belief. Any previous old oh, pattern yeah. that doesn't serve, it's gone. There's no space for any of those old patterns that don't serve you now. What's happening? Uh, it just feels like when I have had this warm, when you said fiery, it just had this warm gush in my tummy. And almost from the back of my spine here, down the bottom here, it Beautiful. just felt all warm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But that was the strangest feeling. It went in there to the back. It's like a feeling. Whatever that boop. Almost like when you go on a roller coaster, you know, when you lose something. <laughs> yeah. Because sometimes those mm. roller, you know, they're exciting, right? Yeah. Yeah. So just take your attention back up to your heart space one more time. And as you begin to imagine this future, this beautiful future unfolding where you are the voice, you have all this beautiful knowledge and content, wisdom to pass out because you are so caring and so compassionate to these parents and these kids. You want to be of service to them. You are compassioning in this field. You are a voice to be reckoned with in this field. And just really deeply connect with that sense of service, of doing it for others, of those young children that you are going to impact from such an early age that will change their whole life, that will put them on the right path for their whole life. Taking that sense of vision up into your headspace with all those beautiful fireworks that allow this beautiful compassionate creativity to fire off and you may think you've got the words of that first webinar but your head may already be coming up with a number of other webinars and other platforms where you can get this voice out and just give it permission to fire away all these ideas and over the next couple of days you might want to have a notebook handy to start recording some of them so that you can recall them consciously when you need to and as you take that passionate creativity down through the heart again true to you and dropping it into your gut finding that courage from the very back of your spine the courage to go out and do this and make it happen the courage to take that missing step the courage to be all that you were created to be on this planet the courage to have that self-belief even when the world might put some resistance in the way but again those fireworks are just gonna fire up and get you past any resistance onto that right path flowers mark your path ahead of you as you walk towards that beautiful water within which you put that beautiful ripple that will spread out around the globe in such a beautiful gentle way 
and bringing yourself back up to heart level again, closing that loop. You might want to just invite your body. Is there a new wisdom, a new wisdom that will take you forward from here that can be your anchor, your memory, your reminder, your refresher? What is it your body knows now about who you are and what you're going to be doing? It's just a sense, a sense of uh, just, as you were saying that, I was walking down the pathway, picking up some flowers, but the grass almost did that ripple effect. When I picked up the flower, it did this, you know how the, when the wind goes, yeah. like it just, yeah, it just did this, and it wasn't water, it was grass, and every time I picked up a flower, it just did that. Well, wow. you know, there's all sorts of all sorts of cheeky installs that I could say that maybe that ripple effect is going to be far quicker than you thought. You don't have to wait for the water, that it's going to come in other places unexpectedly. So look out for opportunities where this might happen both sooner and in different places from where you thought it would be, that it is already all around you. Indeed, if you it's you walking down the path that is already creating that ripple in the grass <laughs> how are you feeling fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden the colors just got really brighter too like it was in the training room after the, one of those those meditations you did, I opened my eyes and it was, <laughs> Someone's put Kodak Technicolor in place. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Whoa. Oh, dearie me. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. You. you should, I tell you, everybody should know you. And they will, because you're going to ripple out around the world and tell every child on the planet so that in a few years, there'll be adults growing up and their parents now can come for coaching. That's right. That's exactly right. Suzanne, that's exactly right. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Now, you know, as well as I do, that that will have taken a lot of metabolic energy. So make sure you look after yourself tonight. Make sure you drink plenty, eat some good nutritious food take some time listening to that you know gentle voice within and just being curious how it grows and gets louder now um, and invite it out and yeah over the next 36 hours or so i would absolutely recommend having a pad of paper and a pen handy because i'm guessing that beautiful creative head of yours is going to start to see all sorts of places where that ripple can show unexpectedly that wasn't in your mind before yes it will I can feel it. It will. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Great job. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording. And once again, thank you that you were happy to share this with the MBIT coaches and for the MBIT coaches listening. It is just an example of coaching. It's not the way of doing it by any stretch. It's just another beautiful example of MBIT coaching. <laughs>